all of us go through tough times. All of us go through seasons where it seems as though the odds are stacked against us and pain becomes a feeling we're all too acquainted with. In Psalms 119 verse 71, David said, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. And I've always asked the question, how can it be good for you to be afflicted? How is there any good for you to go through pain, tribulation, and hard times? But here's the thing, afflictions, tough situations do more than simply show what kind of character we have. Tough times shape and form out character. Now, I believe that affliction, although unpleasant, is necessary for the Christian man or woman. Because if it were not for the struggle you're going through, how would you know that God will never leave you nor forsake you? If it were not for the affliction in your body, how else would you know that by his stripes we are healed? If it were not for the financial challenges you faced, how would you have known that the Lord is a provider? Problems can sometimes be a blessing, saints of God. So be encouraged regardless of what you're facing. You see, I've realized something. As I've grown both in age and spiritual maturity, my need for the Lord has increased. My need for Him to be with me has increased. My need for the Lord to stand by me has increased. And here's why I have such a need for Jesus. I need Jesus Christ because I have tried to do things my own way. But I've been met with the harsh reality that on my own, it is impossible to win. It's impossible to gain a breakthrough. It's impossible to have peace of mind if the Lord is not with me. I need Jesus Christ because there are strongholds in my family that I can't break with my own power. And so I need the strength and might that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. I need God because life is complicated. I have problems, problems that I care not to discuss with anyone because people will often judge before they reveal their own struggles. So I desperately need Jesus Christ. He's the only one who has given me an open invitation in Psalms 55 verse 22 where the Bible reads, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. So you see, I need Jesus because I can't save myself. I can't redeem myself. I can't deliver myself. And there sure isn't any other human being on this planet who can offer me redemption or salvation or eternal life like Jesus Christ can. So I have to be honest. At times when things are tough, I find myself just saying and praying four simple words over and over again. Be with me, Jesus. Be with me, Lord. At times when I'm tempted, I find myself quietly praying, give me strength, Lord. Give me strength, Jesus. And if you can relate to what I'm saying, then I encourage you to stand, child of God. Stand firm in the word of the Lord. Take those things that weigh you down. Take those burdens that slump your shoulders and hand them over to Jesus Christ. Psalms 121 verse 1 and 2 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. This is true for you and I today. Our help comes from the Lord. What's taking up your time? Who's taking up your time? While you still can, seek the Lord while he may be found. 
call upon him while he is near. Because with God on your side, you have been assured of victory already. Don't give the enemy an inch. Don't give him room or an opportunity, but instead, be hidden in Christ. Arm yourself with the Word of God. Arm yourself in prayer. Cover yourself in the blood of Jesus Christ. Abide under the shadow of the Almighty always. And put on the full armor of God and stand ready to fight. At one point in time, I was hurt. I carried a lot of pain. But the more I leaned on Jesus, the more I gave that pain to Him, the more I found Him to be a healer. One who can mend the innermost parts of a person. Maybe you're in a dry season and you find yourself on unstable ground. Well, saints, where we're limited, the Lord is limitless. Where we see challenges, the Lord sees opportunities. Opportunities for Him to demonstrate His love for you. Opportunities for Him to demonstrate His might and power to you. Don't ever become disheartened because you're surrounded by water. And what I mean by that is in Matthew 14, when the disciples were in the boat, they had nowhere to go. They were essentially trapped. If you got out the boat, you're worried about drowning. If you're in the boat, you're still slightly worried about sinking or capsizing. So the disciples were surrounded by water. They were bound by water. But here came Jesus, walking on the very thing that threatened the disciples. The very thing that restrained and limited the disciples is what Jesus used to demonstrate his superior power. So don't be discouraged because you're surrounded by water. Don't be frightened because you're surrounded by water. Call out to Jesus, the one who walks on the water. So even if you're battered by the waves of life, you can call on Jesus. I deserve condemnation. But the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I have received grace instead of punishment. When the devil tried to condemn me, I found there to be no condemnation in Christ. When the devil pointed at my weakness and laughed, I found that the grace offered to me by the Lord was sufficient for me. And in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. I truly love Jesus Christ because when Satan called for me to be cast away, when he tried to tell me that I was unworthy of love because of sin, I found there to be an invitation to approach the mercy seat of Christ. I found an open invitation to come boldly to the throne of grace so that I may maintain mercy and find help in the time of need. Have you met the one who can offer amazing grace? Have you met the one who can heal your deepest scars? Have you met the one who raised Lazarus from the dead? If you haven't met him, you can. You can accept him in your life today and he will come into your heart. I encourage you to call on God Almighty, the one who is, who was, and who is to be. Simply cry out to Jesus, the one who commands millions of angels, the one who has the keys of life and death in his hands. Whatever situation you face today, whatever circumstance or situation, God wants you to call on him. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you don't know. Psalm 50 verse 15, the Bible says, Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. And so I want to encourage you, when you look at God's word, when you look at his promises, he says, trust me in your times of trouble and I will rescue you. 
He says, abide in me and I will restore you. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So let your hope be found in God. He has the perfect solution each and every time. He has the right amount of strength to reinforce you through the good and the tough days. Are we able to say God is good when a lifelong friend turns around to betray you? Are we able to say God is good when the business venture we've launched just doesn't seem to be working? I would like to submit to you that God's goodness is constant. He is good regardless of who's loyal to you or not. He's good regardless of whether that idea you had is making money or not. As children of God, we should be believing that God is good. We should still be saying God is good even when things are not so good for us. Our trials are temporary. Our difficulties don't last forever. The Bible tells us that we should be joyful in all circumstances. And not just that, but we should hold on to Jesus even more tightly when we are in distress. I would go as far as to say, the deeper you're in distress, the deeper your trust in Jesus Christ should be. The more fiery your problems seem to be, the more on fire for God you need to be. If it's painful, you should be prayerful. If it's agonizing, you should be even more prayerful. The rockier life seems to be, the steadier your faith in Jesus Christ should be. Now, of course, putting this in practice isn't easy. It requires maturity, it requires faith, and it most definitely requires the Holy Spirit. But once you've been through some things, once you've faced enough battles, then you don't just memorize certain scriptures. You begin to live them. You begin to so desperately hold on to them. And one of those scriptures is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. And listen to this. Here's what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. That means that if you are feeling crushed with disappointment, then you trust in the Lord with all your heart. If you thought this was the person God intended for you to marry, but they walked away from you, then continue to lean not on your own understanding, but to trust in the Lord with all your heart. If you prepared, you studied, you met all the criteria required for that job, for that position, but they rejected you? Well, child of God, lean not on your own understanding. God will direct your paths. This is what all believers are called to do. So, no matter what comes, keep believing in Jesus Christ. No matter what comes, remain anchored in the one who rose from the dead. No matter what comes, do not, I repeat, do not give up. Hold on to Jesus because when you are weak, he is strong. So use his strength, use his might, no matter what comes your way. The story of the prodigal son is a special story. It's a parable that speaks to me about forgiveness, mercy, and the destructive nature of pride. In one way or another, we are all like this son. We often don't realize the goodness of God. We often don't realize the love of God. And we certainly often underestimate the destructive nature of pride. We often don't truly appreciate just how blessed we are. My point is that the prodigal son walked away from his father in disobedience, but he found out just how brutal life is without his father. The prodigal son walked away from his father because he was seeking his own self-interests. But he found out that serving your own self-interests will only leave you spiritually and physically bankrupt. The prodigal son walked away from his father because he was impatient 
He thought he knew best. But he soon found out that there was a bigger blessing waiting for him if only he had been patient. We've all been in situations where we've slipped and been drawn to things we shouldn't have. We've all opened doors to temptations when we knew better. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, our heart can so easily be drawn to evil, not pushed to evil, not abruptly confronted and smothered by evil, but softly, gently pulled towards evil, drawn to it. That's why David prayed in Psalms 141, do not let my heart incline to any evil. Other translations say, do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil. Don't let me drift toward evil or take part in acts of wickedness. Evil can quietly and gradually tug us towards sin. It's subtle and cunning. And if we're not careful, if we allow ourselves to take a small step, then the evil entices you to take the next one. And then what's one more going to hurt? Then a few more. And suddenly we're right up close to sin and it's got us in a cycle. So let's recognize this. Evil can draw us in. One tiny, small step at a time, right up to the place where we take the final step and sin. So I encourage you to pray the exact prayer David prayed. Let not my heart be drawn to what is evil. The focus for our lives should be to make sure that our individual relationships with God are in good standing. Saints, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 that in the last days, perilous times will come. The world will be unthankful, unholy, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, among so many other things. Now, whether these are the last days or not, whether this is the 11th hour or not, you and I as believers need to make sure that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We can only enter the kingdom of heaven through the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus who explicitly said, no one comes to the Father except through me. You and I need to make sure that we are not found to be the ones who the Bible states. Many will say, Lord, Lord, I have done many wonders in your name, but God will say, I never knew you, depart from me. Don't be in that group of people who are told to depart from the presence of God. Seek Him today while there is still time. So rather than look at each and everything happening in the world and focusing your time and energy with a checklist, focus your time and energy on seeking God. That should be our only focus. To know Jesus, to seek His face, to meditate on His word, to have a right relationship with the Lord. Aim to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Because if you don't, then the words depart from me will be an eternal sentence to the darkness of hell. Now in the end, you will always find that sin takes you further than you want to go. Sin keeps you for longer than you want to stay. And it makes you pay a price far greater than you initially thought that you would. David knew about this. Psalms 141 verse 4 says, Do not let my heart incline to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds in company with men who work iniquity, and let me not eat of their delicacies. I believe this is not only a great prayer, but it's one that is relatable to all of us. In David's time, there were people who wanted him to go along with the evil they were planning. So he prayed that God would keep him from being too close to them. And we should do the same. 
with people, with entertainment, with the internet, with social media. God, keep me from associating with those who do evil. So the two things to take away from David in Psalm 141 are that his heart would not be gently nudged into sin. And secondly, that he would step away from friends and influences that would lead him to do evil. But there's one more thing he prayed. David said, Lord, let me not eat of their delicacies. Sin can be delicious, right? Evil can be delightful. The Bible has this phrase when referring to sin by saying the pleasures of sin. Doing what's wrong can deceptively appear rewarding or pleasurable. After all, Satan is walking around like an angel of light. He makes sin attractive, but in the end, sin is deadly and rotten. David prayed that God would help him face this and say no to sin. The Apostle James also said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. In other words, say no to the devil enough times and he will flee. No is a powerful word. You know how to say no to chocolate, for example. You just say no when it's offered to you. It's the same with sin. So I encourage you to walk with God. Walk with well-chosen friends. Don't ever take the first small step to sin. Say no when the devil tries to entice you with the pleasures of sin.